स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया so now uh, we can the next set of discussion involves the extension of these ideas of variational symmetry to functionals having integrands with several dependent variables so what i said is that the notion of variational the notion of variational invariance the notion of variational invariance can be extended can be extended to functionals can be extended to functionals of several functionals of several dependent dependent variables right several dependent variables uh, given let us say those variables are q1 q2 q1 right okay so we consider the functional we consider the functional j of q bar which is also equal to from t0 to t1 of l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot of dt we consider this general functional let me represent this equation by 5 right and also now we are going to consider transformations of this form consider transformation consider transformations of the form t is equal to theta of t comma q bar comma epsilon and q k is equal to psi k of t comma q bar comma epsilon okay okay so uh, so we consider the transformation of this form let me call this by 6 okay so again we need to satisfy certain uh, consistency criteria namely that the transformation for the parameter value epsilon equal to 0 are nothing but the identity transformation so we uh, plus we also assume uh, well plus we also assume the condition that theta of t comma q bar comma 0 is equal to t and psi of t bar comma q t comma q bar comma 0 is q k right okay so this is the value this is essentially i am saying that at epsilon is equal to 0 i am getting the i am getting back the ident identity transformation the identity transformation okay so at epsilon equal to 0 i am getting the identity transformation fine so then i need to talk about the concept of variationally invariant uh, functionals okay similar to the case of one dependent variable i can extend my notion as follows so the integrand the integrand l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot is variationally variationally invariant is variationally invariant under under the transformation given by 6 is variationally invariant under the transformation 6 under the transformation 6 if for all epsilon such that uh, epsilon is small Uh, in any sub interval in any sub interval well let me complete this statement this is nothing but the extension of the result for the case of one dependent variable so in the sub interval alpha beta which is a subset of t0 t1 we get that we get that the integral from alpha uh, alpha to beta l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot 
dt this is also equal to integral from a epsilon a epsilon to b epsilon of l of t comma q epsilon t comma q bar well these are all q bars so q bar epsilon of t right of dt okay so the integrand is variationally invariant if i can find the if i can see that my uh, my integrand retains the same form when transforming from one coordinate to the other right and so so where where my a epsilon again similar to our one variable case is theta of alpha theta of alpha comma q bar l alpha comma epsilon and my beta of epsilon is theta of beta comma q bar beta comma epsilon okay where i denote my where i denote my dot where i denote my dot to be differentiation with respect to t right i have the variable t here so this dot represents the derivative with respect to t and this dot <coughs> well let me so uh, uh, let me uh, erase this so this dot represents the derivative with respect to the variable capital t right okay so let us look at an example for the uh, multiply dependent variable case see how the ideas of transformation works right so the example i have is as follows so suppose n let my so let my n be equal to 2 t0 equal to 0 and t1 is equal to 1 and and let us say that l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot is equal to 1 by 2m of q1 square plus q2 square plus so I am just introducing, so this in this case my Lagrangian is as follows, uh, students who are looking at this Lagrangian will immediately recognize that this is the same example that we introduced in example 10 of our previous lecture, that is the central force problem. And I want to highlight similar to the central force problem, right, because we here we have a plus here. Now these sort of a Lagrangian frequently appears where we have to describe the planetary motion uh, also known as the Kepler's law right. So, so my m and k are constants. So, my Lagrangian uh, Lagrangian L here is a Lagrangian uh, which describes which describes my planetary uh, which describes my planetary motion via the Kepler's law, okay, via the Kepler's law, okay, right, via the Kepler's law, okay. So, let us consider a transformation, uh, well, uh, to see how, uh, what sort of transformation this Lagrangian is variationally invariant. So, let us let us consider this transformation, consider the transformation, the simplest one is the translational transformation. Consider the transformation of the form t is equal to t plus epsilon and q k is, is equal to q k s, right. Now, notice that this in, in this Lagrangian, this is independent, this Lagrangian is independent of the independent variable t. So, we have shown, we have mentioned for integrands of one variable that for function, for integrands which are independent of the independent variable will be invariant under this translational transformation. So, what I am saying is that it is easy, easy to show that this transformation is the variational symmetry, variational symmetry, variational symmetry for L students should check that by plugging in, uh, by plugging in the respective variables, right. Okay, so, where here my k is 1 and 2. So, we have three relations here. So, let us look at a more non-trivial case. 
Uh, so, let us consider, let us consider uh, another transformation, another transformation of the form capital T is equal to T and Q 1 is equal to Q 1 cos epsilon plus Q 2 is equal to Q 2 sin epsilon and capital Q 2 is equal to minus q 1 sin epsilon plus q 2 sin well q 2 cos epsilon and I see let me uh, let me call this transformation by 7 because so far we have introduced relations up to 6 right. So, that is what we have done here is it yes we have introduced relations up to 6. So, 6 was my transformation the general form. Okay, so, we have called this uh, rotational transform. So, this is my rotational transformation. Okay. So, let us look at what happens under this transformation what is the uh, what is the form of my Lagrangian. So, so which means for this uh, transformation 7 I see that d t is small d t because the way we have set up the variable and my capital Q 1 dot the Q 1 dot is uh, derivative well well uh, well I need to be careful here uh, well the way we have uh, let us just quickly go back uh, well I think we are fine we are fine here. So, Q 1 dot well notice we notice the following where Q 1 is Q 1 times cos epsilon and sin epsilon. So, the only dependence of the variable t which is small t is via q 1 and q 2. So, when we take the derivative we are differentiating the variables q, small q 1 small q 2 because epsilon the parameter epsilon is fixed right. So, my variable q 1 dot is q 1 dot cos epsilon plus q 2 dot sin epsilon right and my variable q 2 dot is equal to minus q 1 dot sin epsilon plus q 2 dot uh, cos epsilon right. And uh, so, here it is quite clear that my dot is the derivative with respect to the original independent variable t ok. So, then let us calculate l of t comma q epsilon comma q epsilon dot without going into detail what is this dot it will be clear very soon ok. So, then my Lagrangian in this new coordinate let me put a bar because we are talking about multiply dependent coordinates. So, it is half m q 1 dot square plus q 2 dot square plus k by square root of q 1 square plus q 2 square right we plug in the values of q 1 and q 2 and q 1 dot and q 2 dot and we see that this is also equal to half m. So, I am just plugging in all the values that we have so far derived this is also equal to q 1 dot cos epsilon plus q 2 dot sin epsilon square plus minus q 1 sin epsilon plus q 2 cos epsilon whole square right. This is also uh, we have just plugged in these values plus plus k by well k by square root of q 1 square plus q 2 square. So, q 1 is q 1 cos epsilon plus q 2 sin epsilon whole square plus uh, the second the second quantity is so, q 1 minus q 2. So, minus capital Q 2. So, this is my capital Q 1 and capital Q 2 is minus q 1 sin epsilon plus q 2 cos epsilon whole square and this is my capital Q 2. Note that uh, after simplification let me write down the form of this function. We see that I am going to get after all the simplification the steps here are omitted we are going to recover back our original integral uh, sorry our original Lagrangian. So, k by k 
q1 square plus q2 square and that is my l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot okay so what have we what have we found that the transformation 7 which is a rotational transformation is the variational symmetry to this problem with the lagrangian given as follows okay so which means hence for any sub interval remember our original interval was from 0 to 1 for any sub interval of the original interval uh, it turns out that l of l of t comma q bar comma q bar dot dt from alpha to beta this is also equal to l of a epsilon to beta epsilon l of t comma q epsilon comma q epsilon dot uh, dt right okay so we so what have we got that we have shown this or the result is that our relation 7 our relation 7 is a variational is a variational symmetry symmetry okay so that is what we have seen okay we are almost at a point where we are ready to describe nothers theorem but there is one more concept that i want to introduce at this point so so that is the concept of infinitesimal generators infinitesimal generators right infinitesimal generators so consider consider our so consider the taylor series expansion of our transformation functions theta and psi so consider the taylor the taylor series expansion the taylor series expansion of the transformation the taylor series expansion of the transformation uh, x is equal to capital x of x comma y comma epsilon and y is equal to psi of x comma y comma epsilon and my epsilon is small is small okay we see that we are going to do the taylor series expansion around epsilon equal to 0 so i can say that uh, using taylor series x is theta of x y 0 plus epsilon times del theta del epsilon at set at epsilon equal to 0 plus higher order terms plus order epsilon square right ok uh, similarly uh, so so what we are trying to do is we are trying to represent our transformations uh, up to linear order we are ignoring higher order uh, when i talk about higher order i am talking about higher order with respect to the parameter epsilon so i am i am trying to ignore the effects of the higher order uh, higher order terms with respect to epsilon because epsilon is close to zero it's small okay so uh, similarly we can write uh, we can write the other expression so y is equal to the function psi at x comma y comma zero plus epsilon del psi del epsilon uh, well we are differentiating with respect to the unknown parameter epsilon set at epsilon equal to 0 plus higher order terms right uh, we also uh, denote denote these functions uh, xi to be our derivatives del theta del epsilon at epsilon equal to 0 and my eta to be del del uh, xi del psi del epsilon at epsilon equal to 0 from here i get the so called so these are my so called infinitesimal infinitesimal generators infinitesimal generators generators infinitesimal generators right so from here uh, we can extend we can extend the concept of infinitesimal generator to functions of several dependent variables so similarly similarly for multiple for multiple dependent variables for multiple dependent variables uh, variable 
uh, functionals for multiple dependent variable functionals, I see that my infinitesimal generators, my infinitesimal generators are xi of t comma q bar now in terms of the variables q bar. This is going to be del eps, del theta del epsilon at epsilon equal to 0 and eta now is a vector. So, for each variable uh, component, for each component corresponding to the variable q case, uh, I have eta k of t comma q bar which is del psi k del epsilon right del psi k del epsilon evaluated at epsilon equal to 0. So, these are my infinitesimal generators in uh, in the general case with multiply dependent variables. So, 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 let us now state the so called Noether's theorem. So, in the simplest possible form. So, Noether's theorem uh, I denote it by theorem 20 in the way we are numbering our theorems. So, Noether's theorem and I am going to denote it by the theorem n t in future reference. So, Noether's theorem says suppose, suppose I am given a function f of x comma y comma y prime is variationally, is variationally invariant, is variationally invariant, is variationally invariant. Uh, on the interval x naught to x 1 under the transformation under the transformation 3. Again, we are going back to our case of one dependent variable under the transformation 3, where we had described the transformation for one dependent variable with with xi comma eta as infinitesimal 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 generators, xi comma eta as my infinitesimal generators, then what have I got? Then uh, the Noether's theorem tells us the conservation laws. So, what it says is suppose you give me the infinitesimal generator, Noether gives you the conservation law, right. So, so eta del f del y prime plus xi, xi uh, f minus del f del y prime, y prime is equal to a constant along along any extremal, along any extremal. Okay. So, so that is in the simplest form the Noether's theorem. Now, people can, students can immediately recognize that this, this expression is not new. In the past, we have denoted this first quantity by p and the second quantity here by minus h. And this expression arose in, uh, in several places, especially when we were discussing broken extremal. So, this expression is not new. Okay? And notice that eta and xi are nothing but variation in x or uh, delta x delta y. Right? Okay. So, what I am saying is, if, if my p is if I introduce the variable p to be del f del y prime and my and my h to be uh, to be to be y prime del f del y prime minus f then then what I say what I see is that the Noether's theorem states that eta p minus xi h is equal to a constant. It is a constant, right. So, this is a constant, fine. Okay. So, let us look at, quickly let us look at some examples, the application of Noether's theorem. So, the example I have in mind is, I denoted by example 5. So, consider, consider this j. So, j of y given by integral from x 0 to x 1, x y prime square d x right and i am going to consider the transformation x is equal to x plus epsilon uh, 2x log natural log of x well 2x natural log of x yes and capital y is equal to 1 plus epsilon small y right so which means uh, which means 
my infinitesimal generators, my psi is the derivative of theta with epsilon and put epsilon equal to 0 and that gives me 2 x log x and my eta, my eta is derivative of psi with respect to epsilon set epsilon equal to 0 which is also equal to uh, y, okay, fine. So, we have our infinitesimal generators and further, further my p which is del f del y prime is also equal to 2 x y prime and my h, my h comes out to be, well my h is, uh, what is my h here? Uh, this comes out to be uh, x y prime square. We can just directly, so this is nothing but y prime f of y prime minus, uh, we need to re reconsider minus f, minus f, okay. So, we get back the same expression f h is x y prime square, okay. So, then, uh, so it implies that the Noether's theorem says that the extremals the extremals lie on lie on p zeta minus well i need to first so so well there is one thing you uh, the students need to verify you need to verify that uh, that that this is a variational symmetry this is a variational symmetry so this transformation uh, leads to a functional in the new variables which is variationally invariant. So, that needs to be verified first because we before we can apply Noether's theorem. So, the Noether's theorem says that this is also equal to uh, p psi, no, so p eta minus h psi, this is equal to a constant, right. So, this is also equal to a constant, fine. So, what have we got here? we have got the following, uh, we plug all these values and I am going to get the following relation that x y prime y minus x log x uh, x y prime square, this is also equal to a constant, right. And from here what do I get? I can see that if I differentiate, uh, so the the uh, the conclusion from here that we get is that the extremals, we can simplify this relation via the following. So, the conclusion that we are going to get that the extremals lie on, lie on the curve, the curve given by x y prime, x y prime whole prime which is also equal to 0. The extremal lie on this curve and how did we get that? Let us differentiate so, let me call this expression as, let me call this expression by phi. So, let us differentiate phi with respect to x and see that this gives us, this gives us the following x y prime whole prime times y minus x y prime log x plus x y prime uh, x y prime minus x y prime whole prime times log x, right. So, we can see that x y prime whole prime is a common factor in both and then phi x is equal to 0 only if this, well only if this quantity is 0. So, the conclusion is that the extremal lie on this curve, right. So, that comes right from the Noether's result, okay. So, let us now extend our Noether's theorem for functions of multiple variables and let us look at an example for that case. So, the, the version, let me call this theorem 20a because this is the extension of the Noether's theorem. It tells us that for multiple, for multiply dependent variables, multiple dependent, uh, dependent variables, for multiple dependent variables, q bar. Uh, suppose, suppose what I have is L of t comma q bar comma q bar dot uh, is variationally invariant. This is 
variationally invariant it is variationally invariant on the interval t0 to t1 right under the transformation under the transformation under the transformation t is equal to theta of t comma q bar comma epsilon and uh, q k is equal to psi k of t comma q bar comma epsilon. So, this is my transformation here, where, where my q bar, where my q bar is q 1, q 2, q n and my, my, uh, my the my z xi comma eta k the set of functions are my infinitesimal generators infinitesimal 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 generators okay so then so then the result says that summation pk eta k minus h xi well, is that the way we described it for one variable case? Yes. So, summation p k eta k k from 1 to n minus h xi summation this minus h xi is equal to a constant, right. So, this is also equal to a constant, fine, ok. So, that is my Noether's theorem uh, along, along any extremal, along any extremal along any extremal uh, of j q, which is integral from t 0 to t 1 l of this function, right. So, let me quickly uh, write down this result, where p k is the derivative del l del q k dot and my h is summation p k q k dot minus l fine. So, uh, let us look at an example, let us look at an example uh, in this situation. So, the example that I have is uh, this will be the, the final example of our discussion. So, consider consider uh, our Lagrangian of the form l of t q bar comma q bar dot. So, I am taking a vector here. Uh, this is a 2D problem. So, this is m by 2 q 1 dot square plus q 2 dot square plus k by square root of q 1 square plus q 2 square, right. And let us, so then we can see that if I take this transformation t is equal to t plus epsilon and q k uh, is equal to q k, this is certainly a variational symmetry because in this case my xi which is the derivative of t with respect to epsilon set epsilon equal to 0. So, derivative of t with respect to epsilon set epsilon equal to 0 is 1 and my eta is del q k. So, my eta k is uh, del epsilon this is equal to 0. So, my Noether's theorem says that that I am going to get uh, the conservation law h is equal to a constant, right. Now, if if I take, uh, uh, so if I consider this transformation, consider the transformation t is equal to t, that is a rotational transformation, q 1 is equal to q 1 cos epsilon plus q 2 sin epsilon, sin epsilon and q 2 is equal to minus q 1 sin epsilon plus q 2 cos epsilon and from here I can see that. Uh, via the Noether's theorem that my infinitesimal gen generators xi is equal to 0, my eta 1 is the derivative of q 1 with respect to epsilon set epsilon equal to 0 will give me q 2 and my eta 2 is going to give me after taking the derivative will give me negative q 1 and from here my Noether's theorem tells me that the conservation law is, uh, is q 1 q 2 dot plus well minus q 2 q 1 dot is equal to a constant. This is along the extremals, along the extremals q bar, along the extremals q bar, fine, ok. 
So, let us look at an extension of this problem and that, uh, so the extension of this problem is another one. So, let, let my q bar of t be q 1. So, I am talking about a problem in 3 D, right, denote the particle position. So, let us look at a problem in uh, Newtonian mechanics and then my kinetic energy for this system T of q bar will be half m uh, q 1 dot square plus q 2 dot square plus q 3 dot square, fine. And my potential energy will be V of q bar, which is, well, V of T comma q bar, which is also equal to the sum function. Let me keep it as it is. Then my functional is given by integral from t 0 to t 1 L. So, L d t where, where my Lagrangian L is t minus v, right. So, now students can check that if we were to look at these sort of transformations. So, if I take this transformation t is equal to t plus epsilon that is a translational transformation q k is equal to q k. Uh, I see that my infinitesimal generators are z, z equal to 1, eta k equal to 0 and my Noether's theorem tells me that I get h which is in turns out to be t plus v is equal to a constant. Essentially for this transformation, well, for this transformation I am satisfying the conservation of energy, right. I am satisfying the conservation of energy. On the other hand, if I take t equal to t equal to t and q k to be equal, well q 1, q 1 to be q 1 plus epsilon and q k to be small q k, I see that my psi equal to 0, eta 1, uh, eta 1 is 1 and eta 2 is equal to eta 3 equal to 0. I see that my Noether's theorem gives me m q 1 dot equal to a constant or this is no nothing but the conservation of conservation of linear momentum. And finally, uh, the last observation is the following. If I take t equal to, uh, if I take the rotational, uh, rotational transformation q 1 to be q 1 cos epsilon plus q 2 sin epsilon and q 2 to be minus q 1 cos, well minus q 1 sin epsilon plus q 2 cos epsilon uh, and finally my capital Q 3 is Q 3. I see that my infinitesimal generators are psi equal to 0 and eta 1 equal to Q 2 and eta 2 equal to Q 1 and eta 3 equal to 0. From here I get the conservation laws p 1 q 2 minus uh, p 2 q 1 equal to a constant and we can see that this is the z component of the angular momentum and hence we are satisfying or we are conserving angular momentum in this, uh, in this, uh, uh, in this transformation. So, thank you very much for listening. And in the next lecture, I am going to primarily talk about how to find these variational symmetries. It turns out that once we are able to find these variational symmetries, the Noether's theorem can easily take care of the conservation loss. So, thank you very much.